because Collapse is just going to go straight towards the Bane in the team fight. So I think Thunder, if they can somehow find a way to get towards the later stages, I'm happy with their draft, but I don't think Spirit are going to let them get to there. Yeah, I remember when I was talking with uh, Seb when we were at that Riyadh event and Team Spirit were picking this Marcy Viper combo a lot. And he was like, man, why can't they just pick Collapse like this styling hero where he's able to just outplay people? And Night Stalker is one of them. You know, you could play around the, the tree lines. You could use your ultimate, you know, dip in and out of team fights and make the big plays happen. I, I think he's a fantastic player on this hero. He was MVP almost every single time that they picked it in the games that I've seen. So uh, I've, I've got faith in him to be able to get uh, a pretty good amount out of this game. So if Thunder are going to get to the late game, what has to go right for them? And I suppose in particular, what lane really has to be a winning lane for Thunder to try and you know be able to get to that later stages where we feel like this draft might be enabled more? Uh, I, think later, it's not, uh, I don't think you, later, you need to get nerds. kills. I think you just need to try and later, enable nerds. as much experience as possible. So keeping your towers up, I think that's going to be the bigger issue. Just making sure that you've got plenty of room to play with, plenty of map to be able to farm so that Picard is able to scale, so that uh, Sacred's able to scale. It's going to require Dark Margo to play a little bit more of the sacrificial style for sure to enable that and create some of the chaos alongside Matthew and his next assassin. No, I feel like a lot of that's going to be set up then off the back of the support rotations. Really has to start with the first four minutes though. If Thunder t can get their leans in a position where then the supports can start to rotate, be able to secure some of the power runes to enable Damn the Storm Spirit. Amateur. So, <laughs> we'll hold that thought real quick. You got paired of them at Poshka. Just start. You're trading some spells, some right clicks, just trying to be a nuisance. Looks like Panda's going to make the trip all the way back to base, so... Don't worry, Maposhka's got not... the whole fruit market with him. Six mangoes that he's holding on to right now. Just uh, very happily able to waddle back to lane. All of that passive regen, nearly seven health regen. And uh, he's going to be just fine. Also, Decay's about to wear off as well, so you're just going to see what makes Undying so busted right now. Oh, just free HP. He's about to get another free, like, 60 HP as well. Very cool hero. Very, very cool hero indeed is, is the Undying. Why do we feel like they have kind of swapped up the lanes where you've got Mira playing up top with the Draw Ranger and then the, the Undying being down bottom? Mm. I don't know, honestly. I think it's just, it would have been pretty similar regardless. Well, Matthew, actually, maybe it just enables a little bit more kill potential like this. Drow wants that stun set up to be able to go for those early kills. Mira. Oh, he might be in trouble, though. Yutori, they still get first blood, but Sacred just finds a level two at the same time. So with the use of the Malefus, he will be able to catch up. Unfortunately, Sacred just a little bit too late to find the bonus gold from first blood, but at least they do kill off Yutori. I guess we see just why, right? The uh, the stun just enabling that setup. Yes, you get something in exchange for it. So I'm sure Yatoro is going to be talking about uh, just needing to be a little bit more conscientious of making the kill attempt when the Eidolons aren't ready to split because that was what caused the turnaround. Plus that level two, like you mentioned. <laughs> oh, Funny stuff. What Maybe this is another thing as well. Like, potentially a Marcy Night Stalker lean. Like, doesn't seem like you can really look to protect the Night Stalker because he's relatively weak in the lean. But the Undying, on the other hand, is incredibly strong. Yeah. So you, you, you buff up the Night Stalker a little bit. You still put the Marcy in a lean where there's going to be offering some kill threat. So I kind of like the setup that we're seeing out of Spirit. And this is scary because, again, we said, like, this is a team. If they get off to a good start, it's top lane. Another kill picked up for Thunder. We were saying that if Spirit get off to a good start, then this is a lineup that can get a lot of map control early. It is indeed. So the fact that Thunder are getting a decent time out of this top lane sacred with one of his favorite heroes as well on the Enigma, really showing why you look to emphasize it in that first phase, picking it up, that eighth pick. But uh, yeah, like, it's a tale of as old as time, right? The Night Stalker just on the bottom side. You know you're weak in the first five or so minutes. Um, collapse even just holding onto multiple skill points just in case, but... He wants to be able to put multiple into that Hunter in the night so that he's effective as quickly as possible. You can just see he's even going into a little bit more of that damage build. He wants to be able to burst down these targets when he gets on top of them with the Crippling Fear once we get into the stage where ultimates are available. Bottom lane, Tombstone's going to be laid down. Thunder do a really good job to be able to switch their priority to try and deal with the, with the building structure instead. 
So free gold for them to be picked up. A really good job, in fact. You know, they, they're getting much more out of this laning stage than I thought they would, especially considering how uh, how well Maposhka has been playing to be able to keep Pandemu out of the lane. You're mentioning as well that Dark Margo is going to be a really vital component here for Thunder if they are going to have that success. And it looks like he's having a really good lane matchup versus Toronto Tokyo. 26 and 4 compared to the 17 and 1. So I thought good start's going to be the Storm Spirit. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's going to be around securing those power runes for him, right? Enigma's gotten to the stage where he's ridiculously farmed. You just need to make sure you're influencing the lane so that he's in a safe place to farm when uh, the Nyx Assassin needs to make that rotation, secure the six minute rune for himself because he doesn't quite have that ball lightning just yet. As soon as he does, that's when you're going to try and enable him to make that rotation up onto the Drow Ranger. Potentially going to come down to just who maybe gets a little bit more denies in this lane to find that little six first. Top lane, we've got some trading going back and forth. Yutoro, a very early point up in the gust. Going to be able to protect him for the moment. So they'll turn it back onto Matthew. The slows are starting nice to stack up. And the Nyx Assassin forces run into the tree line. There'll be no escaping down to the south. Lands a nice stun, but the arrow... Already came out beforehand, so another kill for Spirit in this top side of the map. Yeah, Mira not being greedy as well, going for the right clicks, realizing that all he needs to do is give Yatoro the vision. Not allow that pesky little Nyx Assassin to get away. He nearly did, but it was just that one extra right click that they needed. We got the night time now. Collapse. A lot of damage onto the faceless void, but the one health should be enough for Bakaz to get the time walk off very, very close. But we see just instantly what happens as soon as it hits the night time, they start to get aggressive and put the pressure onto the void. Mm -hmm. Realizing as well that, uh, you know, you can have those couple of points in the Hunter in the night, immediately mm -hmm. go for the pressure. Mid lane. Hunter Tokyo. Got the level six on Dark Margo. Yeah, he's gonna go for it. Zip under the tower. Why not try and secure with a kill? And Mira will be too late with his TP rotation. Still gonna try and jump on forward. They don't have enough mana on Dark Margo to even get the Marcy nice kill job as well. The tower, though. Matthew making sure that Dark Margo wasn't the one Radiance being hit there. Oh, it would be poetic Dyer's justice if the uh, rune spores bottom and it's a regen rune as well. So, <laughs> oh, a little bit too late with the rotation, but just in time to make sure that the Storm Spirit doesn't necessarily cause a big issue for this top side of the map. So this is some beautiful beautiful plays coming out. The, a tombstone was dropped from, from a Poshka down bottom to try and help with the, the tower siege and to protect the catapult, but Pandemu just dragged the wave. So Spirit, what would have been a lot of damage under the tower is completely nullified things to just that slight play from Pandemu. I wonder if Dark Margo is gonna go back to the mid lane, deal with the siege creep, or if they feel like they're in a position to want to get a kill onto Yatoro up top here. It's all the way back in base. Still in two mines. Oh, it's at the ready. Oh, he's actually gone bottom actually... instead. All right, on to collapse. A lot of damage coming out early on with the Night Stalker. Plenty of mana as well for Dark Margo to continue the chase throughout the lane. And Maposhka just has to stand off to the side and watch as his core dies. And now he too, we put six feet under as Thunder makes some great movements. They get two down bottom and they also find the kill on Tamira up top. Now it does come at the cost of the Black Hole. So Sacred first use of the ultimate for the game. And a good amount of mana as well on Dark Margo. Of course, not playing with that power rune means that he's not instantly able to get back to the mid lane as quickly as he would have liked. You've also got- Toro might be in trouble top. Sacred's got some idolants to play with. Matthew with the follow-up stung as well. He's gonna try and get in front of the Draw Ranger if they need the body blocks. And now mid lane, Dark Margo. Oh, they toss him out of the Rolling Thunder. And Ring he just dances the around the ball. <laughs> Miboshka's gonna try and move over, but they're too late. They might be able to secure the tower at least, but a kill goes begging. I mean, he hasn't been in this lane for three waves now, so this Siege Creeper survived for quite a long time. Really good individual movement from Toronto Tokyo to make sure that the aggro has been drawn onto him and the creeps instead. But uh, yeah, it would have been great to be able to secure that kill on top of things. At least you open up the map a little bit now, and you're probably going to secure the power room. Oh, never mind Panda Boo. <laughs> just stealing it away right in front of Maposhka's face. Yoik. That one is now mine, my good sir. Alright, well we do have some some ultimates soon to play with, because with the Chronosphere. 
Do we want to see the Faces Void leave this lane and try and get use of the Chrono before Team Spirit come bottom? Because it does seem like this is the next part of the map that Spirit want to be in. Uh, I still feel like Collapse doesn't necessarily quite do enough damage. Like, he's got the ultimate ready to level up. He's even holding on to another point. Uh, no, never mind, he's not. But uh, I feel like they might be able to TP people down and hold a lot of TPs on Thunder to make sure that you can look to protect. Top lane. To dive under the tower, long zip in from Dark Marga, but the rotations are going to be too quick. Look at the response as Toronto Tokyo lines up the Rolling Thunder, can bounce back off the wall as well. They can keep Yatara alive. This is going to be huge for Team Spirit as he's just almost able to limp away. They'll finally get the finishing blow, but it is such a grave cost for Thunder as multiple casualties come out from Radiant. Too deep of a dive for them. Too deep indeed. Still, again, able to make sure that uh, Yatoro isn't having the greatest time, but such a super deep dive at this stage of the game when you don't have those key ultimates to be able to play around. You just see the impact of the Rolling Thunder connecting onto multiple, making sure that the Black Hole is not going to be a factor. So pesky idol and that finishing blow. See, so bottom lane collapse is going to be a bit cautious because yeah, the he's got Matthew nearby. Let's see if they're going to have the damage, though. It's a really beefy Night Stalker. has got some one charges to play with as well. Mira's going to try and provide some assistance. Collapse is actually going to look to man fight. No way they come out on top as Collapse the toggles. eats the entire Chronosphere thanks to the toggles and now Thunder. A big ultimate on cooldown. They don't even get anything out of it. You know what I said about outplaying? That, that's what I'm talking about right <laughs> that there. That is one. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Oh no! I mean, that is a, a big ultimate where you can potentially get a kill and, and slow down the Night Stalker. All of a sudden, this lane. <laughs> Very vulnerable for them. For Toronto <laughs> Tokyo, just tried to roll a couple of times. Gets caught with a black late. hole. Yeah, and multiple Eidolons hitting into him as well. Nicely done by Sacred, having a fantastic game so far, even getting Ooh. the double, 1v2 turnaround. And bottom as well, Collapse gets another kill as well, Dark Ascension used. So it looks like they will be able to secure this tower. Very nicely done, some kills across the map, 10, 7, 11 minutes in, a back and forth game we have. And they know, they, there's not any rotations coming down towards this bottom side. They don't quite have vision of the Storm Spirit. He's making sure to play right on the range of that Night Stalker. Now that it turns to daytime, maybe now is when they look to make that move and Matthew's TPing in to make it happen. Nice first on. Mira's going to be nearby to try and provide some assistance. Clap's just going to go for the straight TP out and they won't have the damage. Panda move just a little bit too late with the smoke to be able to provide that stun to cancel the TP. They will try and wrap around and see if they can get something out of this, though. Maybe a ward's going to be placed at the triangle to set up for a pick-off in the future. Instead, yeah, nice. I'll go for Mirror under the towel. Things are coming through from Yatoro. Probably not going to be able to deal with the Storm Spirit. They'll go for the easier targeting Matthew instead. Pandamu is coming behind them. Yatoro might be in trouble, especially with Sacred taping in. Going to have to deal with the tree so they can scout his position, but it has given enough time for Team Spirit to react Fiend's as well. It's Toronto Tokyo. He's ready with the Rolling Thunder. Pandamu's in a position where he can counter this, though. Fiend's group out to the left side. Do they have the damage to be able to get the pain? Glee's life inside the ultimate. They're going to turn to deal with the Undying instead. There's now... They can turn and deal with Toronto Tokyo. Dominating streak for Sacred Pandemic. Great position with the use of the ultimate to stop the Rolling Thunder and its trap. And that was a 4v5 as well. Picard's just sitting up here on the top hand side, farming away very, very happily, realizing that he needs that little bit of extra damage now if he's looking to try and take out people like the Night Stalker inside of the Chrono. This an aggressive zip into the triangle as well. The ward that they placed prior oh, they're gonna go for one should more. allow them to catch up to Mira. Now Pandamu with the wraparound also gets the nightmare to hold Yatoru into place and thunder. And what is a very even game a couple of minutes ago, but the net worth lead is starting to balloon up. I'm going to attempt to protect this bottom side. Collapse is going to be the one that gets caught out here. Chronosphere at the ready. Will he look to go for it solo? Oh, he's going to be able to get away in time amount of vision and they can see that he's looking to try and wrap onto the rest of the team but just a little bit of free experience coming through there for collapse and you said it before though look at sacred's game eight one and three on the enigma mm -hmm. holy hell this guy's so far oh yeah what yeah he's, he's pretty crazy right uh 
it's just one of those things that you need to be able to protect from and some TIs, some people's favorite heroes just seem to come into the meta. I mean, we you've seen me gush about Sacred's Pangolier, so even just to have that aspect to be able to give it to both oh, mid Yatoru might be in trouble. A push on the higher ground, Tombstone laid down and, and Thunder aren't going to continue to push up. So nice body guarding coming through from a push gun. Just goddamn ill pings. <laughs> I keep seeing as the day goes on. It's wherever the wards are placed. <laughs> it's a good ping. I like it. Chris Luck started it, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's I right. It was Beast Chris that I was doing. I was trying to remember. I know Yachtro is a big fan of buying the Aghanim Shard on the Drow Ranger, and I wonder if he's going to do it this time around, just for the uh, the old hypothermia, bit of regen reduction against you know the Bane, even the Faceless Void to a lesser extent helps pop the Eidolons a little bit too. Oh, see a pin. They want the draw range on. They're going to be able to find her. Matthew with the wraparound ankle. Beautiful positioning coming through from the Nyx Assassin. And Dark Margo will instantly follow up with the damage required. And this can now open up the T1 tower. And indeed, and that's a super early Wraith Pact as well being picked up by Sacred. Looks like he's opting to go into the Aether Lens just to make sure that he can get a little bit more active around the game. You know, you're playing again uh, around some pretty long cooldown ultimates, the Chronosphere, the Black Hole, but if you can get into that Octarine, then suddenly you're not quite as concerned that Team Spirit might just take that one fight if you uh, have a poor one and then look to roll over you. Stupendous! What do we need to see different out of Team Spirit in this next five minutes? Because, of course, the night time being a big advantage for Claps. Can we see them play aggressive, though, and, and try and pull this game back? I think he still feels like he needs that little bit of extra damage. So he's just got enough to be able to buy the Mithril Hammer component of the BKB. And I wonder if he might not even wait until he's got the full thing ready. I think he just needs that extra little injection of damage to make sure that, again, if he goes in onto Pandamu, that Pandamu actually dies. I, I honestly this is think a great wood. Yeah, they, they might look to use the uh, the black hole just to protect the bane. Well, to the north, they're going to run into Dark Margo. As if he's going to try and deal with the Undying first. They do have at least the Rolling Thunder nearby, but down in the lane bottom, Black Hole's going to be cancelled thanks to the silence. Matthew's able to step in as well, along with Pandamu. Do they have a way to cancel the Fiends? So That's where Mira can come into play, but Thunder, there in trouble. Just no escape as Team Spirit swarming into their neighborhood. They've killed off Sacred. They're going to be able to find the Bane as well as Spirit. Was looking like a rocky start to the fight with the Black Hole, but the instant counter proves dividends. I mean, they've got multiple ways to be able to cancel it, right? And uh, it was a nicely timed gust there coming through as well by Yatoro to make sure that they didn't get that full kill. It's, uh, it's a pretty good use of a lot of their spells coming together, but you just see the armlet toggles coming through from Collapse. He's so hard to kill, and it's just going to become even more of an issue once he does pick up that BKB. You see all the vision they get inside the fighter. Like you said, but the armlet toggles keeping collapse alive pops that ultimate all, all of a sudden you know exactly where thunder are playing you got the tombstone laying down as well and just the control of the team fight looks a lot easier for spirit in, in a choke point like that even just something like uh, i think they've had to use it a little defensively these past couple of times one to be able to escape from the faceless void and get that long silence duration but also uh, just then but i think next time they're going to look to use the dark ascension it's going to be a lot more aggressively you're going to have these tier two items you're going to have the completed bkb and i'm sure they're hoping that toronto tokyo will have the blink dagger at that stage because that's going to enable you to have the follow-up onto the back lines to be able to take out these heroes and disrupt the enigma from coming in with a black hole to protect the bane well he's the one that got the streak from from sacred 450 gold given over to the pain clear, so that's definitely going to help getting him closer to that blink timing. A lot of good wards that Spirit are playing with at the moment. They're scouting up a cars and Matthew moving to top. They see Pandemo along with Sacred, so a lot of information that Spirit can do, that can utilize, I should say. Yeah. They're still in farm mode for the next little bit, though. You know, Drow Ranger getting close in towards that Hurricane Pike, going to provide a lot more survivability. So just playing, making sure to play around Mira. They feel that Yatoro has died a few too many times now. One, five, and four. They can't just afford to give him up for free, but they're going to make the solo jump here. Yatoro, everyone's left the neighborhood. Dark Margo should be able to get the kill and then get out with his own life. 
We have some bottle sips to play with to get the mana back. Mirror's gonna be able to drag him closer to the rolling thunder as they will catch up. Great movement over from Team Spirit. They do separate away, so at least there was an opening to be able to continue to slow down Yatoro's game. Yeah, they did. I thought Mirror was going to stay nearby, but he just looked to converge with the rest of the team, and the response was a little bit slow as well to be able to return back towards the rest of the team. They hadn't hit any of those timings as well, so it's not like they were grouping up for a smoke or anything along those lines. Still about 200 gold away from the BKB and the Blink Dagger, and you've only got about a minute or so left of nighttime to, to play with, so collapse once he uses that Dark Ascension. At least it's level 2. Really won't have that much left to be able to do a lot of damage, and you're going to have to play the passive game once again. I'm a Poshka. I'm doing shenanigans like usual. Like, and it's just being nuisance. They're also another long zip in the lane as well. Once again, Dark Margo, where we saw prior of him trying to get the kill onto the Draw Ranger. Looks like also Mira's going to go down in the similar neighborhood as well. So a couple of killers being fed over to Thunder. Up at the top jungle now. They're onto Picards. Get some distance away thanks to the Force Staff. Do they want to stick around though? Kronos are the ready, but Picards a little bit worried that he doesn't have some more reinforcements maybe to pump some damage inside the ultimate. So at least they're just happy with keeping it. Because again, this is a member. Once you get to the later stage, you've got some very good matchups here for Picards and Thunder. Giving a lot of space to the Faceless Void. I mean, that was actually huge, the fact that they had the Dark Ascension popped, but they weren't able to claim anything out of it. Like, uh, now, like I was mentioning, Dark Ascension's going to expire basically right as it turns back into daytime. So what should have been a really big timing for Team Spirit now isn't going to be. Now you're kind of just left a little bit more passive. You're probably still going to go for a play because you've got this Blink Rolling Thunder to be able to play with. But now Collapse certainly isn't anywhere near as much of an issue for people like the, uh, the Bane and the Enigma. So that means the Bane can now look to address with the Pangolier throughout the team fights, and that was something we were mentioning that the Night Stalker kind of nullifies that counter in a way. So this will really open it up for Thunder. It does depend who gets the they... jump, right? That was the purpose, of course. Part of it was giving up uh, a little bit of your life, being the distraction to enable uh, Toronto Tokyo and Collapse to get those items. But part of it was that they wanted to go for this move next. They wanted to be able to push in together onto the bottom side of the map with that vision so that the Blink Dagger on Toronto Tokyo actually finds someone and connects onto them on the back lines. And, uh, they're going to scan ahead, just making sure that this Siege Creep is protected. They want to continue to try and play around with this, but... Seems like they might uh, not really care on Thunder. They're going to realize that they don't have ultimates to play with. Let's just take this second life for a Storm Spirit. And then let's look to make a play with our own BKB. Roshka, great position for the Undying though. Going to be able to pop the smoke and give plenty of time for Team Spirit to potentially even take the fight. They're going to be off the mark for the initial jump. The Dark Margo can easily follow up. <laughs> Just a little play though, dodged out, got a little bit of the extra movement speed, really not wanting to give up their own areas of the map to be able to play with. Even Toronto Tokyo was going for that lucky shot proc onto the Storm Spirit just to provide him that extra couple of seconds, but not able to land it. It really does feel like uh, Yatoro for now doesn't have the the damage output to be able to truly contribute into these team fights until he picks up that, uh, that Yasha. Going straight into the BKB afterwards, not wanting to deal with anything like the Manta style. Seems like he needs the items and along with some of the other members as well. Collapse. Begging for this Blink Dagger just to help with that initial jump. Meanwhile though, again, it's going to be the Nyx Assassin that runs into another member of Team Spirit. So Mira caught out inside the jungle. Dark Margo's going to try and zip in as well, but that's where Panda Boot can come into play. Tokyo's He's got the here. Fiend's Grip holding Collapse into place. They're even going to Black Hole as well from Sacred. A lot of hate given over to Collapse as Night Stalker. Look at all them zombies as well. They end up clearing through all of them, but that's the sort of situation where if Toronto Tokyo is there, as soon as that Fiend's Grip's used, that's his time. They've got no ways other than the Chronosphere for being able to deal with that one. And honestly, their damage into the Chrono isn't the greatest either. Because, of course, he is starting to scale a good amount, and he's even going into the Aghanim Shard as well just to try and potentially bait out a few of these BKB charges to enable the Thunder Awakens team fight as they look to push in and claim even more of the map. They see Yatoro bottom. He's going to be in some trouble here. If he goes for another wave, he's going to run into Dark Margo. And the rest of Thunder is starting to move down just in case they need some more members to help secure the kill. And this is all set up thanks to the Observer. No way Yatoro makes Woo! it out. What is... <laughs> oh my lord. I was, I was sure he was dead. I was sure there was no way he would have survived. 
it's your Toro for you, man. You saw the true sight. You saw the TI Grand Finals. He just has this ability to be able to dodge out and outplay his opponents when they go for these two-on-one ganks. See what they can do now with it on Spirit. A lot of mana are already used from Dark Margo. Of course, he has the Aegis to be able to refresh, but they also know the Fiend's Grip and the Black Hole is on cooldown. They do, but it's not for much longer. Just 30 seconds left to be able to play around that lack of Fiend's Grip. So if they're going to make a play, it's got to be now. You know, the Matthew? Double dust being popped, and he doesn't actually get hit by either of them. And yeah, you can see the instant chat wheel coming in response for it as well. And it gives them away completely. Getting... Your Toro might be in trouble. Do they go for another smoke now? They might honestly be considering it. We've got about a minute left until night time. Duration of Dark Ascension around 40 or so seconds. So by the time that they're looking to connect onto someone on Thunder Awakened side, then they should still have that additional damage from the Hunter of the Night to be able to play around. And I mean, a lot of the time you see Night Stalkers look to emphasize the Void a little bit more strongly, as in the Void ability, not the Faceless Void. But this game, full on Crippling Fear. He realizes his job this game on uh, Collapse is just to take out these supports. Top lane, they're baiting the Nyx Assassin. Oh, oh nice sidestep though from Yatori. He's gonna miss on the Kodal on everyone. So they will still lose Mirror nonetheless. And Spirit is starting to TP in. They actually want to take the team fight now, but Thunder, yeah. they've got all five members. Yeah, Spirit, they've got to be cautious in Dark Margo. He'll start the fight as he butted the tower onto Yatori. He's going to be able to get some distance thanks to the Hurricane Pike, but it will not matter. It's Thunder just lock onto their target, trying to continue the chase, but have they got the damage to secure the kill? As somehow Yatori is still alive for the moment. And now Team Spirit, they can turn it back around, but the heavy commitment out of Thunder, they need to address the Fiend's group, and that's where Mira can come into play. But Sacred jumps over the tree line. The BKB black hole. Where's the damage coming out though? They don't have any follow up at the He's moment. It's out Team Spirit are continuing to stay alive long enough. They need to set themselves up for round two. They're going to try and still continue to bring down the Enigma. The Sacred will finally go down. But do they have the damage and the resources to deal with, with the Storm Spirit afterwards? The silence into the jump in on Mira. And somehow, some way, Team Spirit. We'll be able to take the Aegis team fight and five men wipe Thunder. Man, they do that while still being at a 7k net worth deficit. I mean, they just dived a little bit too far, right? You played around the tree line where Night Stalk is at his strongest. You played behind a tier 2 tower. You didn't respect the buyback coming through from Mira as well. He's been holding on to it for quite some time. And well, it's going to slow down his BKB timing for sure, but... The power of being able to give that sidekick over to Yatoro means that it takes so much longer to be able to take him down. And you just see the power of the Night Stalker as well. Vision wins games and uh, one team spirit that team fight. I just don't know how, how he would stay alive for so long, Yatoro. Just felt like second after second after second, he was just continuing to stay alive. And yep. Sidekick, I mean, that, that's soul not... rip, right click, easy game. Game pike out to the right, bonus movement speed from from the jump in with a rebound, and all of a sudden net worth lead dropped down to seven thousand. I mean, you mentioned how important the vision was in that team fight, but also just thunder. I mean, taking a five on five under a tier two tower for you know a good minute is uh, probably not going to be the easiest way to succeed. Maybe this jump in though into the pink lead though. A bit of momentum going back their way. Toronto Tokyo with the illusion, but. So we're gonna go down inside the Rolling Thunder. A cute attempt playing around with the power rune, but not enough. Yeah, those Eidolons plus the Vlad Zora, plus just a Storm right click, enough to take him down even inside of that Rolling Thunder. So they'll know that he's off the board for about another 50 seconds. Even if he buys back, he's not gonna have the ultimate available. So maybe this is their trigger to just make that exact same play Another again. jump in. Look at this, Matthew and Dark Margo combined together. Collapse. He's thinking about He's it. He's going to try and TP in, yeah. I mean, the rest of the team had an angle down from the triangle, but just we're going to be a little bit too late to follow up. So what was a great team fight from Team Spirit underneath the T2 Tower top, kind of the momentum they were starting to build all of a sudden slowed down thanks to those two pickoffs. Thunder, they've been able to stabilize. They have, they have, but... They're, they're banking on their Drow Ranger right now on Team Spirit. They've given Yatoro a lot of time. Yeah, he's died seven times, but in the past little bit, he's only died that once in the Team Fight, which was still a big win overall for Team Spirit. So 
you're going to have about 800 gold left until he's able to pick up that BKB for himself. Be a little bit more sustainable. Even with the scan, he's going to TP out, just not wanting to trust the fact that, well, you've got a Storm Spirit in the next that have been playing off the map for a little bit too long, and I have no sentry coverage on the bottom side, so got to make sure he goes back towards the safety of the top. If he could be able to claim these Eidolons, it would go a long way towards giving him that little bit of a net worth boost, and looks like he might be able to. So that should get him pretty damn close to the BKB. You'll have the Dark Ascension, and you'll have that uh, still remaining nighttime available for Collapse in these next couple of minutes. It's going to be right around when Roshan is set to spawn as well. So if Team Spirit's going to come back into this game, it's going to be off the next team fight, depending on when Rosh spawns. Could be a big swing for them. We've seen them be able to win the team fight in the past. And getting that objective off the back of it could be huge as well, they potentially giving the shard then. They're pinging them all out. They're walking right past this avenue. Every single member of Spirit revealed under this unorthodox ward. They've got the gem though, so Maposhka might see it. Not quite. So it's coming. Thunder know where you are and you have no idea. They're coming. Matthew, they're going to run back under the ward. Matthew can get the jump or Dark Marco in stamp with the fourth double impale. It's beautiful. And Secrets nearby as well for good measure. A black hole dropped on the dome and now to the tier two tower they go. As Bacaz is in with the Chronosphere. Mirror's down and out of the count as Thunder find three. And that's all set up thanks to the Observer ward. They eventually got rid of it on the, <laughs> the retreat out, but too little, too late. Roshan is up as well. It was a 40-second respawn timer, so probably would have favored Team Spirit with the exact timing that they need. But again, Vision wins games. It won Team Spirit the previous team fight before that one, and we just saw what it was able to have, the impact for Thunder Awakens. So I like the idea of buying the gem when you're in this disadvantageous spot on Spirit, but... Just the, the smallest thing, not being able to scout it out, ends up giving it away over to Thunder Awaken. Now they're able to secure this area around the Roche Pit, secure that uh, Aegis, and more importantly, the Aghanim Shard as well, which is going to provide a lot of value over to... I would assume the Bane? I mean, AoE Brain Sap isn't too bad, just being able to survive that little bit longer in these fights. I like this smoke from Spirit. Their lanes are in a really good position. They know the ultimates were used as well. Look at Matthew's positioning. The only issue is, is Matthew's positioning. Again, this Nyx Assassin. Oh, no. And this... Oh, Matthew! Matthew, what was that? A Foreman, Stun, and Thunder. They're going to capitalize on the initiation. That was beautiful. You couldn't have asked for much better. He blocked the smoke, gets the jump in onto four at a choke point, and now they can finish up the team fight as well as Collapse will not escape. A triple for Dark Margo. And it looks like the writing is on the wall. Thunder with the second Roche now. All the components given over. Let's take a look at that one again. Oh, beautiful. The Ravage coming through from the Impale there. Able to land onto four. And then even just then, you see Collapse. He's on the back line. He has the BKB popped as well. He's still very vulnerable to be caught out by that Fiend's Grip. Multiple ways to be able to pierce those BKBs right now on Thunder Awakened means that there's so much less value. Wondering, do they give the Aghanim Shard over to Pandamu? Surely you give it to Matthew. He deserves it after that one. And yeah, there we go. They hand it over. He's going to pop it for that little bit of extra magic resistance reduction. Not like he needs it, though. What do you do now? You try to make a team fight work knowing that Thunder had all their ultimates on cooldown. And well, now you're the team without the ultimates. Dark Ascent down for 50 and thunder they've got black hole up in a couple in 10 seconds so they're ready con to continue on yep. 20 seconds away from the fiends grip as well so again just really solid positioning coming out from thunder they've been able to bottle up a double damage as well for dark margo into the level 20 talent extra electric vortex duration so if he's able to find someone if you're able to get the jump i feel like thunder awaken they're the style of team that want to go first Ooh. oh they know where pango is and because a beautiful double chrono off the right side that's it they've got to tap out thunder awaken what an incredible game one it just seems like there's no angle back in spirit will still try and hold this game but Oh, Thunder have just looked so clean. They have. You give people their comfort, and this is what they're going to be able to deliver. You know, the Picard's Faceless Void, absolute top tier. Everyone, essentially, being able to play at their absolute pinnacle. And 
collapse. He's going to need to get back to the base. They're hitting onto tier fours. He's got his level 16, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. The Bashup still not ready to be purchased up. Oshkoff gets the tombstone down, but they'll instantly jump on top of him. Toronto Tokyo with a fall up as well, but the buildings are starting to fall. The zombies starting. are doing a lot of damage towards the Enigma. They'll kill off Sacred. But is that the only person they're going to be able to kill as they put themselves too far forward of the net worth deficit? They will not be able to get themselves back inside the base. They're too squishy as Thunder just blow them up one by one. And the throne, it'll eventually blow up. Collapse, he'll make the attempt. You've got your Toro back up in a couple of seconds, but the respawn will take too long as Thunder. A very, very convincing game one victory from them. Yeah, starting out the day 0-2, but Thunder Awaken, they've woken up and uh, they have done it in fantastic style. I mean, it was just an absolute bloodbath as well. Two kills a minute across the board. It really felt like Team Spirit wanted to take it to them, but they played right into Thunder Awaken's hands. This is the style of gameplay that they go for. They don't care about the meta. They just care about what they're good at and... Well, sometimes those two things just happen to coincide very, very nicely. I mentioned before that Bane, he's pretty much been a forgotten hero. For